perhaps it'll be young O'Farrell or even Jason Mooney that will take the ruck but it does uh, at this stage look as if it's going to be O'Farrell and hasn't he had a great uh, debut season Dale Lewis in the centre square at the moment bit of a surprise Barry Hall's got uh, Stafford by the looks of things and down with Mr Lockett is Mr Waitland already having a little bit of a, a push in the shelf so Shane you're playing in your first final welcome and here we go the second qualifying final is underway looks like it will be Lewis to go with Rob Harvey don't be surprised to see them rotate O'Loughlin and Swass on uh, the great ruck row so it's Everett up against O'Farrell Harvey tries to slap it forward towards Stuart Lowe couldn't take it at the first attempt. Lewis gets him at the second. Lowe goes again. So too does Lewis. Harvey's right there with him. Pummeling it over the top. And there'll be a bounce by umpire Brian Sheehan, who's with umpires Peter Carey and Stephen Hanley for this qualifying final. And up the other end of the ground, the full forward and full back. Seymour and Heatley also uh, in a tangle. Still in the middle. Everett wins it. And it's kicked down towards Barry. He's at the left footer, but he's able to get the hand pass away to uh, the fleet footed Philandia. Charges down towards the half forward line. Lockett couldn't take it. Stafford through. Here's O'Loughlin, one of the excitement machines. And they'll be looking for goals from him tonight. Philandia again. Sandy, keep you up the, the line. Sorry, Sandy, keep you up the date with the uh, Sydney bench. As you mentioned, Paul Ruth is on the bench. Jason Mooney, Jason Saddington, and Jared Crouch, Dougie. Stephen Ziller, Matthew, uh, Matty Lapman, Brad Campbell, and Brett Cook. For some cool, of course. Thanks, Dougie, and thank you, Dipper. As we're going to have a ball up just inside Sydney's 50. Bruce, there's a slight breeze going towards the, uh, or favouring St Kilda. I mean, maybe two, a two-goal breeze from the centre of the ground. And Andrew Dunkley's picking up Stuart Lowe. It looks like he is going to drop back and stay pretty close to goals. Stafford and Everett, neither of them getting a crack at it. And Everett's going to get a free kick here over the shoulder. So he's at half back. You wonder the effectiveness of the, uh, the huge men tonight. It'll be interesting to see the role they play. That's a big kick getting uh, 70 metres on that. McPherson went to ground, no free kick. Wharf hasn't got a hand on it just yet. Sirikoski was very good here the, uh, in the 101 point win. Pushes to Thompson. Thompson, good play to Harvey. Harvey at 60 metres. Cute kick, a good one. And he's got Heatley at centre half forward. It was a clean build up. In fact, the Swans made a real meal of that at the back, didn't they? Yeah, they didn't handle the slippery ball all that well. They were, a lot of the, they had three players there and uh, most of them stood back and waited for the other person to go for them. Sirikoski just got a nice tap forward. And this is just a brilliant pass from Rob Harvey to set up Heatley. Important kick this one. You get uh, the feeling that if Heatley can get it away, his confidence will skyrocket. First match for a while. He's missed the last three. Kick four here. And the other occasion they played. That's a beautiful kick. It's straight through the middle. The start the Saints wanted. They've got to try and keep the crowd under control all night, don't they? It's not easy to do, but Heatley's got the first. It's important for the Saints to really fire early because I think it'll uh, not only boost their own confidence, but the seeds of doubt will be sown in the minds of the Swans. They know they haven't got a great track record against uh, this club. They would have spoken about it, the impact of uh, playing the Saints on this ground. And if they uh, trail a quarter time, well, all of a sudden the doubt is there and they have to work hard on their own confidence. Yes. A confidence booster. Orchard on Aussie Jones. For Jason Heatley, Everett and O'Farrell go at it again. It's a huge challenge for young Brett O'Farrell. Thompson's hand pass goes astray, but already the boys finding the slippery surface rather difficult. Troy Luff became a father during the week. His father's day tomorrow. What a week it could be for him. Lewis tries to set something up in the middle. Maxfield, he decides to take them on. Sirikoski is away once again, and so too St Kilda. Tony Brown's 48 metres out, goes in towards goal. Windmars crying put in the square still, and it's out of bounds on the top. And I think both sides still coming to terms with this uh, wet and slippery ball. It's been pretty good conditions uh, in Melbourne in recent times, so uh, not unexpected of St Kilda, but we saw Everett do a magnificent smother, and then rather than just kick the ball off the ground, he tried to bend over and pick it up. Jason Heatley, sole goal scorer at this stage as Wharf brings it back into play. Still on half forward. Thompson at the bottom of the pack goes in hard. Lewis will be first if he can pick it up and control it. Just going seven or eight metres around the boundary line. Yeah, spot on, Gerald. It's so important tonight that, uh, to keep your feet, especially when the ball's around there, because uh, if you fall over, you certainly give the opposition a chance to pick you up. The Saints have got uh, five boys playing in their first final. And we certainly wish them well. 
Here's Thompson again, picking up early touches. Nathan Burke tries to sock off the ground uh, towards the Windmar path, but intercepted by McPherson. Now Sydney can charge into the middle. Barrett is edged out, however, by Maxie Hudson. Pushed past him. Philandia is working hard. Those little feet are pumping like pistons. He was held, and he'll get a free kick. Yeah, Pete Philandia has got the uh, free kick coming, coming into the side tonight. Surprised to see him start, but he has got the pace to go with Gavin Mitchell. I think it's fair to say he has been down for the last four or five weeks. Oh, Lachlan's the target. Harvey almost intercepted. Maxfield in strongly. Johnny Stevens comes in over the top. Burke it is who works solidly and gets it out to Harvey. He's clear and so too St Kilda. Obviously getting early touches. He absolutely slaughtered the Swans here in round 10. McPherson tried one through his legs. It didn't work. McLaren kick around the body. Not bad. Heatley front spot. Seymour. Schwartz gets back. Daniels to try and worry him out of it. Seymour's got it under pressure from Heatley. Back to Schwartz. Schwartz with a bit of time now at half back. Drives it low to the line and finds it. Now what's happened here? It might be a free kick coming back to Schwartz against or to Nix I think against the Saints. He's saying above the shoulder. So Nix in the back pocket. So the ball being relayed back. Brett Knowles with a big responsibility playing on uh, Mickey O'Loughlin. He's one of the guys that can win this match for the Swans. O'Loughlin and Lockett got seven of the eight goals between them in the last clash. They're going to rely heavily on them again tonight. Dudley, good fingertipper at halfback. Well, not part. Gee, I thought he had a fair bit of that. Everett's handball inside. Back to Daniels. Good to see him back in the team. He knows this ground so well. Harvey again important as he finds low inside 50. And low. He's going to go on, I think, here. The little short one over oh. the top to Young. Missed by Seymour. Taken by Heatley. The snap looks good. It's a goal. It's his second. Well, I spoke about being a dummy full forward at the start. I don't think he's that. He's kept the first two in a hurry. If he was uh, brought in as that, well, it's uh, certainly working the plan because that was a great snap. Poor decision by Stuart Lowe. In fact, poor disposal. The decision was was OK, but he poked the ball up in the air and really did set up uh, Matthew Young. But what a great snap by Jason Hootley. Dead eye dick. Well, it's been relatively lean pickings for Jason Heatley so far this season in 18 games, some 45 goals, but already he's got two here tonight as Nathan Burke tries to get it out of the middle once again. Everett will surge it forward. Tried to take it out of the air. That was unsuccessful. Sydney now through Schwass, go up towards half forward. Barry and Hudson, who's going to be first to recover? Socket off the ground by Creswell, down towards half forward. Maxwell was his target. Thompson was there, but so too Mitchell. Hall is caught, and he may be pinged. No, play on, says the umpire. And he does. Lewis takes it. 52 metres out. He goes for goal. It's flat. It's long. And it's there. Sydney get there first. And the move has worked uh, with Harvey getting a lot of early possessions. He's had four kicks. But Dale Lewis, with I think it is his first possession, he's gone bang with, one, with his first kick and kicked a very important goal. Have a look. Harvey sweating on him. But I think uh, it was his left foot that beat Harvey. He had foxed him a little bit. And, uh, well, they really did win that football because on centre wing, a couple of St Kilda support, St Kilda players, including Ozzy Jones, thought that uh, each other was going to go for the ball. So confusion reigning and a goal to the Swans. They needed it, didn't they? O'Farrell getting over Everett. Everett back to Daniels, to Hall at centre half back, high ball to centre half forward but it'll be difficult to mark, Brown and Maxwell get underneath it, Seymour I meant Luff, Luff back to Dunkley, Dunkley kicks it as far as he can wide reasonably effective, Creswell sitting and waiting a bit, did it alright Creswell, pushing towards the line and found it, it's a night for wet weather footy, there's no doubt about that and Creswell could come to the fore here Hall will come across to contest doesn't get that far, O'Farrell if it sits for Johnny Stevens. Young cuts across, O'Loughlin almost runs into Stevens. O'Loughlin does it on his own in the end. Lockett can't get front spot. Winmar will go again. Philandia is right there with him. Pick yourself up, young man, but he can't. And they squash him into the turf and force him out. Settled now, hasn't it? Saints got a good quick start. Swans have settled. I think we're in for a slot. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we knew that Jack Daniels would get a job coming into this side. He's picking up uh, Wayne Swass. Ever got a hand to it. Young, almost through his legs. Maxwell, good play by Thompson. 
Back to Creswell under pressure. Soft handle, well played by Everett. Played the percentage as well. Back to Luff. Luff's handle in board, okay. McPherson, handle was good. Found Orchard, releases uh, Creswell. Creswell with a little cutie, and he's got Stafford inside 50. Now, he's also a goal-kicking ruck, but he's got more very wide. Could really go back and have a shot from here. I think we'll see Sydney take a lot of shots in this half forward line because every opposition that comes to Sydney now has their half back line zoning into Tony Lockett's area, which means a half forward line is generally pretty open. Stafford kicks it high, won't make it. O'Farrell sets himself, he's got it. He's going to be a real problem, I think. He emerged, didn't he, earlier this year, and then we saw him last week, Sandy, yeah. against Collingwood when he came in for Stafford, and you just knew that he had to play him tonight. He's just too good to leave out. Particularly with Darrell Wakeland out injured. They are a little bit short uh, down in defence and. Suspended, Wakeland. Suspended. He's also got a crack on the uh, base of his skull, which puts him in doubt for next week as well. So let's see if O'Farrell can kick the goal from the pocket. They like it, he likes it, he's got it. Some good young big men in the game. We saw one today at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Jeff White, this kid's not there yet, but he's on the way. It's two goals apiece. And it was a predictable move that they were going to uh, push this guy down next to Tony Lockett. They desperately need another focal point, uh, the Swans. Someone to take the pressure off Tony Lockett. And he certainly come up with the goods early in the match. So the Heatley lead has disappeared. Two goals apiece. Stafford goes a little too early. Winmar tries to win it out of the middle, but it's stolen by Schwass, who just pokes it over the other side of the ground. Sell out here at the SCG tonight. Certainly not a cool night. I'll tell you what, Sandy, Barry Hall is letting young O'Farrell know, certainly down here at Grand Level, what his <laughs> AFL football is about. He's absolutely getting stuck right into this. <laughs> and you love it. Thank you, Dougie. Here's uh, Robert Harvey again. Flinging it back into play to accommodate Winmar. Burke hoping for a kind bounce, but he had to beat a couple of them. It was a big ass. Darren Treswell gets going in the mud in the middle. Yeah, Goes yeah. to half four to O'Farrell, and it will be downfield. Plugger will get hold of this one. Make no bones about it. It's, uh, I think one of the umpires is confused. It's got to go to Plugger. Wakeland has got to hand it over. So Lockett will have a shot directly in front. He's clipped, he's clipped about three metres, I reckon. Yeah. But listen to the roar. I would say this reminds a lot of Sydney people of a point he kicked back in 1996. Exactly the same position. Any score would have done, and he did it. We remember it well. So Lockett for his 1,274th goal. Kicked 28 in finals. Played in six finals. It's a great kick. Sydney hit the front. Lockett gets his first. Well, it was a poor mistake by the Saints. They had uh, an unfortunate for Shane Wakeman because he was leading Tony Lockett to the ball. Gavin Mitchell, who's uh, been out of forts, been out of sorts, he came in with a very late bump, and the, the kick was paid downfield. And Tony Lockett didn't miss. In fact, the way he kicked it was an ominous sign. Creswell's been important, hasn't he, in the last few minutes? Six posies for uh, Creswell. Five kicks and a handball. So if Barry Hall's going to give O'Farrell a little come to, I think Plugger's probably going to give Shane Wakeland a bit of the same. So it could get really heated there. They're five metres apart at the moment, Plugger and uh, Big Bad. Barry or Bustling or whatever. <laughs> Taken by Thompson. Thompson's kick inside 50, low front spot. It comes to the back, an important ball. Seymour's got to keep his head over the top. He did very well then. Lewis cleverly and finds his target in uh, Wharf. And Wharf kicks the ball to the space and got it over Ozzy's head. An important play again. The Swans have settled pretty well here after the Saints got the first two goals in the match. The kick by Jones down the lines of beauty and finds Burke. Well, that was great play by the Saints because the one percenters were there. Good shepherds from both Thompson and Hudson for Jones to get his first kick. Lowe's got it about 70 metres out. Lowe delivers to full forward. Surikoski front spot. 
Dunkley tried to mark at the back. Good give out to Young. Young kicks a good one. He's got it. Scores a level again. It was Mitchell's handball to Young. And I think it was maybe Dunkley who tried to mark it at the back, which is pretty precarious on a night like tonight, and scores a level. And it was one down here on the wing, that uh, ball that was won by Ozzy Jones, courtesy of a couple of magnificent shepherds by his teammates, and it pumped the ball into the back line. As you see, the punch could have come. It was a good call, Bruce. And Matthew Young pushing forward has come up the goods. Goal for goal here at the SCG as Matty Young gets his first. Stafford goes again at the second attempt. Creswell almost throws it out. It's got to sit for Stewie Maxfield. It doesn't. Melania couldn't take it. Burke can, and he gets a hurried kick. Out wide. We've got a number of options there. First to it is McLaren. He's a long way out, but he's closing fast. Long and low. He goes in towards goal. The diving lunge was desperate and behind the end result. Mickey Wimmer, of course, is now off the ground on the bench, uh, Sandy. And uh, Zillow's come on, the man who's uh, kicked, what, six goals last time this side's played? Yes, and importantly, Dipper, he has gone forward. Yep. Stan said, get out of defence, get down to that forward line. He booted six. And Jason Heatley in that same day booted four. Now, uh, Lockett and Wakeman down the other end. I'm keeping a bit of an eye on them because they're having a little bit of a how to do, you, how to do. But this is the Schwatter. Out of the centre, Wayne Schwartz. Lewis is loose. Creswell's running. The compare combined. Maxfield says go. And he does. And Lachlan is down in the forward line. Lockett is there as well. Barry also, but it's socket off the ground. Down towards half back, slap wide. Stevens could be first to it. He'll leave it for the smaller man of Philandia. Tucks it under his arm, and away he goes. He loves this situation. In towards O'Loughlin and Lockett, and the former takes the mark in the left forward pocket. What about the shepherd by Big Tony? Just put the frame in front. No way you get round it. Well, these are the two that have done the bulk of the scoring for Sydney. Michael O'Loughlin has not missed a game this year. All Australian last year, he's kicked 33 goals so far this season, and he's not added to that because he shaved the woodwork. And you heard the roar of the crowd. I think when he left the when the ball left the boot, that was going straight through the middle, but the wind just had a bit of a bit of a force on it and pushed it sideways slightly just into the post. He cuddled it just a bit, didn't he? It was a beautiful kick, but it didn't have a whole lot of momentum. Good on Shane Wakeman. He's certainly standing up to Tony early. It's a very interesting situation. Schwartz getting plenty of it. Oh. Let's fly with a high one. O'Loughlin's at the back. He's got a beauty. Oh, I could see him coming in. He was lurking. It was a good option by Schwartz. A big bang from 65. And Schwartz is getting too much footy on Jack Daniels. He's now uh, had four kicks. And he kicks the ball so long, you often get uh, double the reward. But it does look fairly obvious that Mickey O'Loughlin is going to be the the other option for the Swans. So when Lockett takes the attention, he bobs up. They're in front again. O'Loughlin gets his first. This is going to be a good game of footy. You can feel it already. But just at the moment, uh, it does look as if Sydney have got more scoring options. They've had Heatley get a couple of goals. They've had to graft for those, but they haven't got a Tony Lockett up in their forward half for St Kilda. They've got a Stewie Lowe, but he's doing a lot of damage uh, across the half forward line. I'd like to see him push down deep into the goal square and take a couple of grabs, force the issue with Dunkley. A goal, the difference. O'Farrell goes early as we go back to the centre. It's Everett who gets it out to Burke. St Kilda go forward, down towards Stuart Lowe territory. Slapped away from him. The Sydney defence standing strong, starting with Matthew Nix. Pushed wide down towards the half-back boundary, and there'll be a throw-in. Jared, uh, Mark Orchard always does a, a terrific tagging job. He's uh, certainly got uh, the Mossy Jones at the moment. Uh, what do you think about putting Ozzy Jones onto uh, Swats? And uh, hopefully you can get a show with the ball is at the moment. Well, it's not a bad option, Dipper. You'd probably wait a little bit longer in the match, but uh, Ozzy's still struggling to get kicks with just two possessions, but he's in it now. And there he is, taking a one-hander in opposition to Orchard. He was listening to you, Dipper. <laughs> From the middle, he goes to half-forward. Dunkley will see it head towards the boundary line in that right forward pocket. With him also is Daniel McPherson. And there'll be another throw. 
Jared, maybe a, a Matthew Young, maybe the uh, the guy who could probably do the job on Swash. Well, they've got a number of options, Dougie, and I think uh, Young will be one of the next cabs off the ring. Dunkley trying to slap it clear. Eventually pushed out the back door. Good combining by Sydney as Wharf kicks it in towards Hollandia. He's been a little dynamo. He gets it up to Maxfield. Stewie sets sail the plugger into Lockett. At the back, he can't take it. And he sees it go over the line. Picks himself up. Finds again, Mr. Wakeman. Says we'll have more time. Well, Gavin Mitchell just made the critical error of waiting for the football. And Peter Philandia, he's having a great match to date. Snuck in, won this ball. And Big Tony, just a bit stiff not to get a free kick. In the right forward pocket for Sydney. O'Farrell is centering it. Harvey away. St Kilda away. Back towards Brown on centre wing. And he marks uncontested. Drifts it in towards Nathan Burke with under six minutes remaining in this first quarter. Burke comes to Huxton. The Saints looking to set something up. But that's not a good kick, but it is a solid mark by Greg Stafford. Thinks about Mooney and then goes for him on half. With some space, delivers well to Nick's on the run. He's an attacking halfback flanker. Held the kick up. Wants O'Farrell at half forward. Holds it very well then. Schwartz trying something a little spectacular. A boundary throw in at right half forward. Well, the Saints have got to do their job tonight, and the, uh, the Crows can still go out if the results go the wrong way. O'Farrell pushes forward. Burke's got it. He kicks it as far as he can. This is an important ball. Who gets to their feet first off? Wakeland, Lockett, McLaren. Wakeland goes off the ground. Maxwell coming in with Seymour, and Heatley free kicks Seymour. Surely pushed in the back. Found me up at the field up actually went to the ground and then blew the whistle. Seymour's free kick at centre wing. <laughs> a little pass. He wants O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin got rid of his man. Play on called. Swans with some numbers. Hall held up. Pushes out. Okay to Burke. Burke on the upwards. Good to Harvey. Everett to full forward. Harvey's little one. Two spider. Try to half volley. Taken by Tuckley. Goes to ground. Got the handball away. All right. Uh, then Creswell. No high tackle. Brown's handball out. She is hard to get. Thompson on hands and knees. Breaking the line was McPherson, importantly. Good long kick. Schwartz. Oh! Nearly a beauty, but gives a free kick away. <laughs> Got very high. Just might have been better off to use the hip and shoulder. It's a bit stiff to give away the free kick because I thought it was a genuine attempt at a mark. Knowles has kicked a straight to Lockett, by the way. He's probably too far out. He can wind himself up here, plugger. Tries a torpedo, kicks it straight to Mitchell. It's a bad kick. He gave himself a chance to really go long. And Mitchell's got it in the back pocket. Tell you what, if Swass had a, that ball had a start, we may have had to uh, revisit the cameras. Yeah, we would have. We would have had put an addendum. Just added one. Mitchell from the back pocket. Goes wide to the outer side. Certainly not a night for high flyers, but uh, the Swatter gave us something to think about then. Sirikoski, Stafford. The night has cleared somewhat in the skies above. Surikowski tries to tap wide. Sydney have steadied very well after St Kilda's early start. Stafford takes the hand pass from Wharf, kicks it high in towards the half forward line. Young's in trouble, just pokes the hand pass away, hoping for support and eventually getting it to the parent goes round the body. Oh! Is it right on the line from Knowles? Away goes Johnny Stevens. He can sniff a goal. But he pulls it too far to the right. Here's that kick once again from the young man. Twenty-six to nineteen. Four-two plays three-one. Sydney leads. Wakeman gets underneath the drop punt. It's high. Sirikowski will come over the top. O'Farrell almost had it. Mooney could have been held. He did get rid of the ball. Jones couldn't take it. Luff goes off the ground. This is dangerous. Has he got a player going past him? Creswell, he tried to get it back to him. Wasn't successful. Zilla comes in over the top and locks it up. Stan Alves. Big season last year. They went into the final series with great form. Not so this season. So the big challenge in front of them. Young. Burke. Harvey right on the line. Oh, he found a way. 
but it's a scrappy old kick just outside the 50 and Brown just allowed it to go over. Swans have been slow starters this year. They've only won seven first quarters in 22. But they'll be in front of quarter time tonight. It's 4-2-3-1, very deep in the first turn. Sirikoski, now there's a free kick, is it? Way down the ground against Seymour, I think, on Heatley. So the umpire, who wasn't officiating, has picked that up. So there's been a bit of niggle between the two of them throughout this first term, like there has at the other end with Shane Wakeland and Lockett. Heatley delivers, wants Everett. They all go to ground. Free kick to the Saints is going to Everett. Well, against Dunkley. Everett, a uh, couple of kicks away from goal here. So the Swans are pretty annoyed with this, I'd imagine, because they had the ball in their forward line. They've given up uh, a couple of free kicks just over the shoulder. Now, Everett kicks to centre half forward. Harvey sitting there. Stevens went off the ground, kicking in danger. No. Oh, just about put his whistle to his mouth, decided not to. And it'll be a ball up again. 26 to 19. A couple of goals to Heatley early, but. Uh, Lewis got the first important one for the Swans to steady them, and they do lead at quarter time. It's been an entertaining first quarter. We're in for a good match here, you'd reckon, on what we've seen so far. And the Swans are seven points in front. Everett certainly has been has gone into the forward line now with Lowe going into the ruck. But the big clash is Robert Harvey and Darren Creswell. I think Darren Creswell has got more possessions have gone forward. Robert Harvey working very hard in the back half. And, of course, Burke and Lewis very even there, Dipper, I think. But the one is Swass and Daniels as well. He could work by Mooney to give Luff a long kick down to the forward line. Lockett is there at the back. He couldn't take it. Schwass has been very, very busy. Wakeland is locked up. Too. And it'll come back. Yep. He's going to play it to Wakeland. Who had an interesting first term with Tony Lockett and did pretty well. He's just looking at the flags on the other side of the ground. That breeze does appear to have picked up. And see that ball swerve decidedly towards the line. That was and picked up by the breeze. And the benches, boys, uh, for Sydney, we've got uh, Paul Ruse, uh, Leo Barry Sanington, and uh, Jared Crouch from Sydney. Okay, Dipper will have a throw in. Mooney again doing the work in front of Sirikowski. Stevens takes the mark, plays on, 60 metres out, goes into the pocket, too far, and again out of bounds on the full. And on the, on the bench for the St. Kilda cool side, we've got Nicky Wimmer, uh, Matthew Lappin, Brad Campbell, and Brett Cook. For those St. Kilda. You, thanks, Doug, have just joined us. Brad Campbell coming into the lineup for Justin Peg at all. That was not a good kick back into play. And now John Stevens finds himself with a kick just 45 metres out. The breeze is at his back. And he has a chance to stretch this lead to 13 points. Right goalpost is the way, isn't it? Yeah, there's no doubt it's going to uh, deviate a little bit uh, to the left. The heavier the ball gets, obviously, the less it deviates, but she's pretty fresh at the moment. Has one finals goal to his name. He's done that pretty well. Just needed another four or five metres. And it would have come back for him, but behind is the end result. So, Jason Saddington and the boys, and Paul Ruse coming back into the lineup this week with Stafford and also for Landy. 4-3-3-1. Wakeland to bring it in. This side of the ground the, uh, is the dead pocket as far as Sydney's concerned when attacking. And Wakeland's going to go this way. And you can see the ball coming away again. Barry Hall timed it well to Daniels, I should say, to Thompson. Thompson through the centre. Dunkley has to stand tall. Good effort there by Sirikoski. But built it away. Thompson at ground level was good. Dunkley's tackled too high. It'll come back to Thompson. Andrew Thompson in the uh, heart of the centre square here. And he's been an important player for Sydney, for uh, St Kilda. He's getting a lot of those uh, neutral balls. Everett very wide, has got it. This will be very hard to score from out here tonight, kicking into the, uh, the breeze now. Goes in short and gets McLaren. McLaren right on 50. Lowe's in the goal square. Stafford's back there with him. He's going to kick it there. Lowe's going to set himself. Stafford goes. Tries to get the punch away. Stevens has been busy to Philandia. Mitchell tries to run him down. It's a good defensive kick by Philandia. It found the line about 40 metres along. At the moment, St Kilda certainly haven't got a clear win on the ground where the Swans have got about three or four. This breeze is really blowing as uh, Dipper and Ducky told us a quarter time to Sydney's left forward pocket at the moment. They've got a handy break here in a low-scoring game. 
Harvey read it beautifully. 48 metres out. Goes for it. It's a good kick. It's a very good kick. He's kicked a goal. A great goal by Robert Harvey. A very big kick into the breeze. And the Saints back within touch. He's a genius, Robert Harvey. And, uh, well... I think he's actually playing against uh, Dale Lewis. It did look as if Burke and Creswell were uh, matching up on each other, but we'll follow that one with interest. We'll get another report from the boys, but there you see O'Loughlin on uh, Harvey there, so perhaps it's his turn to pick him up in this quarter. But what a goal it was. Keeps St Kilda in touch. The skills of Robert Harvey again on show. He kicks his first. The Saints close the gap. They're down by two points. O'Farrell can take it out of the middle. Doesn't get a clean kick. It may sit for Lewis, but he in turn decides to leave it. They can go forward here from Creswell. Out of the mud in the middle goes Darren Creswell. Kicking down towards Lockett. Waitland is there. An attempt at soccer off the ground. Oh, then Plucker comes in. He tries to go off the ground, but he can't do it. Paul can't get away. Gets rid of the ball low. Philandia goes in hard. Stevens was there as well. Maxfield pops it over the top. Back it comes to Creswell. Tries to send it for O'Loughlin. 52 metres out. It's coming back. It's coming back, Michael. And it was touched right on the line. Geez, he's having a great game, Shane Wakeland. He is uh, in outstanding form. And that was an enormous kick from Mickey O'Loughlin. That was only just uh, a couple of centimetres away from a good goal. Look at uh, look at Wakeland. He just went uh, from instinct on that occasion. That was a fantastic defensive work. It's a kick out, however, goes straight to Jason Moody. And Moody can thumb a two on the left foot if he gets going. Well, he certainly went for distance. Lockett was his target. Again, couldn't take it. Stevens again fight, tries to find Lockett. He can't. But look at them burrow in there, kicking in towards goal, but unable to get the distance was McPherson. Bronx. And go to the back. They'll hold it there. There'll be a throw in. As again, Winmar waits his chance on the bench. Well, the Saints have really got to uh, get this ball away as we have another look at that fantastic smother. Because eventually they'll crack and the Swans will get through for a goal. Thompson defends. Tumbling a puck back towards Sir, but in front is luck. A proud dad during the week. Kicks in towards half forward. A good kick, but the mark not taken. Creswell at the bottom working hard. Lewis, the veteran, Dale Lewis. He goes. Lewis gets his second. In game number 149. So he's looking for a major milestone next week if they can keep winning. Well, it was only a matter of time. The Swans continue to pump the ball into the forward 50. In fact, I think the Swans defence have done extraordinarily well to keep them uh, away from the goal for so long a period. But eventually, Creswell and Lewis for a goal. 5-4 to 4-1, Lewis with a couple of goals. He got the first one in the opening quarter for the Swans and has got their first goal in the second term. Important ones. Everett lays it down. Harvey's playing some sort of a match held up by O'Loughlin. Creswell's also having a great game. Harvey, wonderfully done. Brilliant. Kicks it back towards the uh, 50. Nicks onto it. Takes a beauty. That's a good mark. He really went for it and got it. And attacks. And this is where Sydney are going. Out wide to the attacking flank in the second term. Lewis was at the back. O'Farrell. Barry Hall. Back turn was OK. Belts it wide. Orchard and Jones. They're both very quick. We all know. Orchard just goes to the line. It was a good play. Boundary throw in. Kira, you mentioned uh, Dale Lewis before. Now uh, Andrew Thompson has picked him up. Maybe a bit of a mismatch there because of the height of, uh, of uh, Lewis there. And Burke really has picked up Creswell now, hasn't he? I mean, that's a... That's the real one-on-one -on -one there, too. But I think the interesting point is that O'Loughlin's now having a run on Harvey, so it looks as if they've had a pre-match strategy of uh, putting two or three attacking players on Robert Harvey. Love to Lewis. McPherson did very well there. The handball was slick to Lewis. Lewis goes and kicks it out of bounds. No, he kicks it behind. Boy, didn't that just take off? Low, but far. So Lewis getting a fair bit of it right at the moment. And this is a critical point in the match, I feel, at 5-5-4-1. The Saints are going to have to hang on here. They've got to hold firm. This bloke is playing some sort of a match, Shane Wakeland. Brings it back into play once again, but this is dangerous. Bounce down to Lockett. Lockett can give it away to Jason Mooney. Now that's dangerous. I'll tell you one thing, Jared. 
The save space one sort of a match. He's kicked the ball to the wrong side twice now for the pick-ins. Kicked it to the attacking flank for Sydney. Yep. Well, it's resulted in a goal this time. That had to be a, a better one than that. And the Swans were all over it. And Bruce, I think it's uh, time that Stewie Lowe came onto the ball. He's uh, he's the go-to man in my view for the Saints. Peter Everett just not getting enough of the footy around the game, around the ground at the moment. And I think Lowe's extra mobility would be of advantage to the Saints just at the moment. Mooney gets his first. We go back to the middle. No decisive winner from the tap out. Harm is lurking there. So too is Burke, and it's he who kicks it high. Ooh, great. Wonderful defender. Dunkley from halfback. Kicks back in towards Moody. Hudson went very early. Could have given away a free kick. Spider's in trouble. Off he goes to Mitchell. He almost trips over himself and loses it. Clever little tap over the back. Harvey gives it off to Burke. Now Nathan Burke runs a long way. He can go for home. Keeps it low. Guides it towards goal, but it drifts away to the right. And another behind goes on the ball. Max Hudson in the hands of the trainers. I think he was pretty lucky not to give a free kick away there. Would have been dangerous for the Swans. Boys, has been a double change by the Saints. Uh, off the ground is Brown and Zilla. On the ground, Matty Lappin for his first run, and Nicky Wimmer back on the ground. Nice finds Wharf. And here is the man you're speaking of, Lappin, 48 metres out. Again, away to the right. Wharf's pretty happy with that, uh, Sandy, because that would have been a really bad mistake. He was called to play on three possessions for Stuart Lowe so far. 41 to 27. Nick's to bring it in. 6 5 4 3. What a come down. Big kick. Lowe belts it oh. back cleverly to Lappin. Lappin can go. 45 metres out. Gives it a hook. Ball coming back and holding up in the breeze and going through from behind. Nick's getting back in a hurry. So. That old cliche and footy, they're peppering for the moment, aren't they? 4 4 6 5. Nick's to bring it back in. But I think the adrenaline running too harsh. Hard there for uh, Lappin because he had a couple of players he could have gone to, Winmar and Everett in particular. Stafford did very well, building it over the back. Young and Stevens towards the line. A boundary throwing. We're on the seventh floor here and they're just about right below us. Big crowd in attendance. We had a lot of rain at the start of the match, a heap of rain during the day. And the Swans lead at the moment by 13 points. Schwartz and Daniels having a little bit behind the play. Maybe get a thick of the things now because Hart is right there, but the Schwartz has got him. Daniels goes again, but it's Love who forces his way through, kicks it high. Oh, look, man! Well, St Kilda went down and they peppered. We're unable to convert. As we see, it happens so often. We've just surrounded Schwartz and... Uh, Four or five Sydney players have been all over him because of the tackle on Harvey. Well, he's had a big game, the Schwader, hasn't he? A big game today. But O'Loughlin can hurt St Kilda here. They tried and failed. O'Loughlin is kicking for his second. 35 metres out. He puts it through. So the danger signs go up to the Saders. 7-5. Kilda's 4-4. Four, four. very dangerous now, Sandy. We saw some Kilda go forward a couple of times and uh, not get it, then not get a goal. And if anything is going to debilitate your enthusiasm, it's when this sort of stuff happens. A, a ball that should have gone your way, a great tackle from Sloss, and then a leaping O'Loughlin scores. Saints need one now. 4-4-7-5. Four, four, O'Loughlin's looked the best forward on... The field so far tonight. O'Farrell goes hard against Everett. Creswell in the centre. Harvey couldn't quite. Swaz is having some sort of a game. Goes very wide. O'Loughlin. Oh! What a mark. What a mark. He's going to play on quickly to Lewis. Lewis could load up here. He's 50 out. He goes to the goal square. Can Plugger take a big one? At the back, Plugger had a couple of goes. It comes to ground. O'Farrell high tackle. No free kick. Thompson's away. It's going close to the line. And Lewis keeps it in. Now it's out. Boundary throw in. And who knows when the rain's going to start again. Low lays it down. McPherson tried to read it. Swass just overdoing at that time and out of bounds on the fall. He's full of confidence, Bruce. He's just going for everything at the moment. Uh, Barnes kicks off the ground. Young. 
to centre winner. Here's Cook and Lowe. Dunkley did very well at the back. Down to Burke, getting plenty of the footy. The win mark, good mark on his chest. Quickly to Harvey. Reasonable build up. Harvey out wide to Daniels. Daniels handball missed the target. Thompson, Seymour, Luff under pressure, just dropped it. I reckon he's lucky. Thompson, Seymour, Stafford getting back. Hands and knees out of play. A bit stiff for Saints, I reckon. Luff did just pop it up. No, a bit unlucky, but he's on the blind side of the umpire. Yeah, that would be a kick, I think, from Jack Daniels. He wouldn't, he wouldn't have been uh, all that confident. We know he's on a great kick, but I think where the Saints have lost the initiative is that Everett is following Stafford wherever he goes rather than dictating play himself. Thank you for the Saints. I think, yes, uh, Stewie Maxfield holding on, and this could provide St Kilda with what they need because Sydney has been threatening to draw away 7-5, playing 4-4. Watch out for Maxfield here. See him taking Thompson to the deck. He didn't have possession of the ball. So he'll have a shot. Andrew Thompson only once before has kicked the goal in a final. And, uh, that's not one of his more memorable ones as he does that. The Spider-Man. Spider Everett is leaving the arena. And a smaller man still has come along. Thanks, Debat. Steven Zilla hoping to recapture that ground 10 form maybe in the forward line. We'll just have to wait and see. Luff gives it away to Lewis. He teases, he taunts, and he waits. And then he kicks up towards centre wing. Not a lot on offer. Maxfield sees it over the line. Good four shots, Sandy. Uh, Lappin missed two. Burke missed a long one. Thompson straight in front. Doug Hawkins and... Uh... Robert Diaby Domenico on the boundary line. Oh. Stafford back inside. Danger. Thompson high ball. That's better. That's a goal. Thompson's kicked the goal. I reckon it was Stafford that built it back inside. I might be wrong. Well, it was either Stafford or Stewie Lowe. If it's Lowe, it was great play. It's 7 5 to 5 4. A very important goal there for the Saints. It was almost uh, the one to square the ledger, wasn't it? And I'm pretty sure Thompson would be ecstatic that uh, that ball went through. By golly, it must have moved very late and uh, long because that looked a long way wide. Been a pretty good quarter for uh, Mr. Thompson. He's had six kicks and just snuck that one home. Maybe that's the goal St Kilda needs. Cook's doing the ruck work now for the Saints. Burke unable to take it, but Jack Daniels can. It's high. Goes towards Young and Stevens, the two number 20s, and they pounce upon it. Harvey, caught by Mooney at the back. He loses it. Comes back towards O'Farrell. Big man just to try to make some space and room. Goes down to half forward. Back it comes to Cook once again. St Kilda now. Maybe this is the time for Oz to stand up. Away he goes. He's pushed it down to half forward. He'll go again. Needs support and gets it from Zilla. It's a high kick from Stephen, though. Not very far. And running with the flight of the ball and taking a typical Dunkley mark is the man himself. Andrew Dunkley. Towards Stewie Maxfield. Has to stand his ground as Thompson crashed in on him. And Thompson recovered well. Now he loses it. Tries to get it out. Sydney fans wanting a free kick for that, but it's not coming their way. Cook gets caught. He loses the ball. Heatley's a long way out. He gets crunched. It's hard. He got one high. He'll get a free kick. He's the one bloke that you'd want the ball in uh, their hands if you're a St Kilda supporter because he can kick a very long goal. Gee, was there a free kick there? No. But he's got it. That's all that matters. Now he's kicking into the breeze. Maybe shorted a little by the stands. But it's still a big ask. He booted two in the first term. Got the first two of the match. And it's amazing how they can come back with two quick goals if he can convert. This one and the one from Thompson just minutes ago. Let's see what he can do. Stafford on the mark. Kicking from just outside 50. The struggle for the distance. It's a big pack including Winmar. Seymour gets it away towards Lewis. Lewis has a look. And kicks to the open spaces. The race is on. Who are they going to let go first? Maybe McPherson. And he's away. Daniel McPherson.
Harrison down towards centre wing. In fact, over the top. It passes Hudson and it passes Ben Pan Hustling. And Barry Hall sees it over the line. There were five Swans players there. Yep. The, fantastic. Great good play by Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, well, and good, good play by Lewis then. He realised he could save the behind. And that's and the disappointing sort of... thing if you're a St Kilda supporter. Because it wasn't the pressure on Lewis just sitting on that goal line. So two kicks have taken it from the goal square to the 50 metre line for uh, the Swans. Young got a great smother there by O'Loughlin. Harvey having a huge game. Daniels, Burke all getting plenty of possessions. Heatley and Seymour. Seymour, well done by Widmar. Tried to toe poke, didn't work, went to ground. Dunkley, well done by Lappin to push forward. Lappin still pushing forward. Handball on the up for Zilla. And a boundary throw in. Well, looking a bit more dangerous in the forward line at least uh, with Lappin there. Nicky Winmar also, but he's just gone to ground a couple of times. And uh, well, you feel for him a little bit because the ball's gone sideways on him on a number of other occasions. But they do look as if they're capable of kicking some goals at ground level. Crouch on the ground for the Swans. Saints rallying here pretty well. Low belts forward. Wharf, handball down low was good. Lewis played the percentage as well again. He's having a very good match. Oh, Deliberately out of play. It's been called a throw anyway. Free kick to the Swan after the Saints. Not well disguised by Lewis. Slap down by says a throw. It looked deliberate one way or the other. Winmar's got it. About 70 metres from goal. Now, Lowe's about 45 metres away from him. Winmar's going to go very short and wide to Zilla. He's got him. Zilla still outside range, you would think. They've been forced into this position because they can't find a player to take a big mark in their forward line. Stewie Lowe's been unable to, and they keep dropping the big men back, uh -huh. including Stafford. Free kick here against against the Saints, is it? Sandy? Oh, Nix has got yep. it, has he? Yep. Put the shepherd in there. Did you see it, Dibbert? Yeah, it was a shepherd around the centre half court area. So it goes to Nix, to Lewis. Lewis too far for Schwoz. Back back cleverly. Daniels belts to the line. Boundary throw. Young Jared uh, Crouch has got the job now. Tag and Robert Harvey playing him very closely. Hope he's got his running shoes on, Doug. Here's Lewis. He does well. Kicks to half forward. Schwoz. And they're the dangerous couple, aren't they? The two left footers, Schwoz and Lewis, have really had big first halves in this match. Speak of the devil. Dale Lewis. Well, he's proficient with either foot, and they lock them as a half forward. Let's see if he can bend this one through. Now, he's, he's 53 metres out. He's built like a piece of eight-gauge wire, and he's just as versatile. But this will little almost... He'll have to curve it, won't he? He's better than even money. He's an enormous kick. Well, he's gone for it, and in doing so, going that extra distance has pulled it away to the left. So another behind is added. He's had five shots for goal. Oh, well. Stewie Maxfield, speaking of left footers, Wakeman brings it in again. Goes to that outer side as he has for the bulk of the night, and Surikowski takes the mark. Sennington on the ground. Good mark by Surikowski there. Wakeman flirting with danger, going to the Swans' attacking flank. Down the line, Surikowski wharfed it well at the back, taken by McLaren. Took a while, but he finally got it. Cook's big high ball to full forward. Seymour and Heatley. Seymour working the line, found it, got away from Heatley and forced it out. So 48 to 34, deep in the first half now, late in the second quarter. Yes, Here Cook is again. the man to come off. Thompson! Thompson! Stewie Lowe once again. Andrew Thompson gets his second for the game, his second for the quarter. And not so long ago, St. Kilda was looking in deep trouble. Now they're back in this in a big, big way. Well, Stuart Lowe's knocks rather than taps have been uh, quite extraordinary. He set up two goals in this turn, both to uh, Andrew Thompson, as a matter of fact. I think Thompson has now squared the ledger against Dale Lewis in the middle. Two to Heatley, two to Thompson, and St Kilda claw their way back. An eight-point ball game. Spider Everett, as we said, back out on the ground. Lewis tries to take it out of the middle. He gives it to Crouch, a short little kick. Here's Tony Lockett in the middle. Jonathan Swings it round now, and 
kicks it wide, but it's going to be OK because the mark has been taken by Daniel McPherson. He kicks into a congested half-board zone. Stafford was there. The big man is almost out pointed. But the back is a lot Big Tony at the centre half board. He gets in a pretty important possession. Pretty hard bloke to stop. Didn't see anybody put their hand up to tackle Big Tony. <laughs> but uh, this is the important kick. Sirikoski very unlikely not to get a, uh, a fourth purchase on it. I think he got three. There's one, two, and just a flick. And Daniels just giving too much latitude on that occasion. Hutched it now on O'Loughlin. 54 to 48, 664. Everett winning it against Stafford, Crouch in the centre, Creswell's handball a bit hot for Lewis, it sits, his handball back to Creswell, Swans go forward, Mark taken by Saddington, he nearly went and decided not to, he would have been on his left foot, it would have been a hard kick where the breeze is coming from and the kid did the right thing, he pulled himself up and he can kick his first goal in his first final. Stephen Handley also pulled him up because his hands went midway through the process of signalling <laughs> play on. And then he also said, no, he stopped. Saddington's kick looks good. He's delivered beautifully. Wasn't that a confident kick? As we see one of the greats of the game sitting out, Paul Ruse, looking on as the 18-year-old slots it through. And suddenly Sydney jump away again. I think it's been their big men that have given them the advantage. This kid, uh, what a player he has proved to be in his first year of footy. That was just an extraordinary shot at goal for someone so inexperienced. There was never any consideration of missing. And that was a great mark, and he also does uh, very destructive work in the middle. Sydney looking good just before half time. In three minutes, an eight point lead has been extended to a 20 point lead. It's a free kick against uh, Wakeland, went into the Center square. Oh no, Lock pushed him in, sorry. And the umpires picked it up. So it's taken by Everett. He kicks to half forward. The Saints would like an answer here, but look at O'Loughlin. Defends and comes wide towards centre wing. Lewis unable to take it. Leo Barry goes back to Michael O'Loughlin. He gets caught, almost loses the jumper. Back to Barry again. Barry to Barry. They can't find O'Loughlin. Young kick. and Mitchell and Co. do the pressure. He's going to get a free kick right on centre wing. That's why the centre square infringement was paid. You aren't allowed to push blokes into the square. McPherson takes it and kicks to half. Ford Hall used the body. It comes out the back. Who's going to be first to it? Daniels is there. Sirikowski is there. And so too is the boundary line. Throw it in. Right forward pocket to Sydney. They lead by 20 points. The Saints are at risk of really letting the good work that they did for the uh, last 10 minutes really unravel here. Vital few minutes. O'Farrell again wins it. Crouch gets the hand pass. The wobbly old punt goes across the face. And Darren Creswell adds a behind. But he's been busy. 17 possessions for Creswell. 10 kicks. Seven hand passes. It looks like uh, Max, Max Hutchinson now has gone off Michael O'Loughlin, picking up Dale Lewis. Looks like Andrew Thompson has a job on the dangerous Michael O'Loughlin. Thanks, Dougie. 9764. Wakeland comes to this side. Low sets himself. Good mark by the big fellow, the co captain. Had his name written on it, but uh, not easy to take tonight. But it's stuck. Those big buckets as he kicks to centre wing. Seymour at the back, built it away from Stafford. McLaren went to ground. Barry can break here. Barry's little chip pass is a good one to O'Farrell. Got him. They have attacked cleverly, Sydney, haven't they, from this flank. They brought the ball into the centre. McPherson's done it a couple of times, and that was a clever mark. Clever kick. Had 12 marks the Swans in the forward 50 compared with four for the Saints. But Barry controlled it really well, didn't he, to O'Farrell? And once again, he's just got some space after a kick out was uh, returned when the players go into his own defence. They leave their opponents, and O'Farrell's been on the end of it twice now. What a missed he has, so he hasn't been able to do what Saddington did. He kicked the goal in the opening term. He's probably just a bit careful with it in the end. 9-8 to 6-4. And Bruce to stand down on the boundary line now, making a quick change. Campbell on for Joe McLaren. Hudson got it in from Young. 
at halfback. Saints need one before half time. There's under two minutes remaining. Just to steady it. Because uh, they did some good work and two quick goals. Saw Sydney regain composure and control. Stafford. Again, Palms with the left hand. That's taken over the line. Sydney fans say it was deliberate. And it was. So it'll be Lewis again. He kicks the half board over the head of O'Loughlin, over the head of Lockett. Stevens is there for St Gilda. To win March in a half back. Very wide. Surakoski being stretched here. He's going to take his man on, and he does, and he does it well. Saddington couldn't get him. The kick to half forward, Zilla. Good mark. Well played, Surakoski. Zilla about 70 metres from goal. Last chance probably before half time. Centering ball, an important one. Cook getting underneath it. Seymour, or rather Heatley. Seymour with him. Goes to ground. Orchard played it beautifully. McPherson, Lewis held it up well. Barry, it slipped through. Hands and knees, a little handball going forward to Lampard. Under pressure. Well played by McPherson to Luff. Luff gets it back to Barry. Barry delivers to full forward. Not a good kick. Barry Hall's got it. Almost as if he'd. Uh, Look for him. Campbell was uh, the bloke earlier for the Saints who got the handball out. Wide to Young. Young at half back. Delivers to half forward. Wharf and also Winmark. Going very slowly here. Dunkley and also low as the siren sounds for half time. And the Swans are going to be pretty happy with that first half. They certainly did not put the Saints away, but they've given themselves a nice handy break. So it's 9 8 to 6 4 at the long break. Second half. Sydney has a very handy lead. The rain for the moment has cleared. Lewis has been effective. He starts off well with a hand pass to Creswell. He kicks it high in towards half forward. Oh, mighty one hander. Plucked at the bottom by the young man, Greg Stafford. And. He's kicking into a breeze that is still pretty stiff. Look at those flags on the other side of the ground. Would you agree, Dipper? Exactly right, uh, Sandy. Uh, he certainly has got to kick along there. Left hand goal post. Directly in front. Thanks, mate. 55 metres out. Flat looking helicopter punt. Lockett had to beat a couple. Dude, it's still in the square, and Plug is still there as well. St Kilda defence. Grimly battling on the hand pass comes out to Harvey from Daniels. He goes short, that's okay. sirikowski has got it on the half back. Kicks it high, a floater. Low having trouble maybe with the lights in his eyes. Daniels, body over the ball. Out it comes to Harvey. That typical floating hand pass is going to be okay. The runner is Stephen Zilla. He can go all the way here. 52 metres out. He could have gone a lot further. Kicks in towards goal. Wharf is beaten. And that is a fine mark taken by Nicky Whitmark. Well, it was a good result for the Saints. It uh, looked as if they were going to concede a goal up the other end. And then a very good uh, transfer up into their forward line. Zilla. Smart move to go one out to Winmar, and he's done the job for them. First goal to St Kilda, very important in this second half. Again, they close the gap. 16 points. Well, Nicky Winmar is no stranger to that uh, full forward position, and I think it's a pretty smart move from Stan to get him down there. He hasn't, uh, doesn't look to have the run in his legs to be a dominating player through the middle of the ground. And I think that... Uh, just using him as a burst player at full forward is uh, is something that the Saints really need to fire for them. They've got to pull something out, a trick out of the bag. You know, they just can't continue on with their standard play because they are getting outgunned in most areas. So they need one of their superstars to stand up, and Nicky's just a man. They've got the wind and the rain at their back here. The Saints have started the rain again, but they've closed. 9-8 to 7-4. Aussies out of the centre. Takes a bounce. Takes a run. Takes a kick. Winmar's got it. Oh, this is an explosive start. Jones and Winmar. So important to the fortunes of the Saints. And Nicky can kick his second in less than a minute and close this match right up. A big important kick and he's put it straight through the middle. Well, that goes some way to repaying what happened about three weeks ago. Two huge goals at the start of this second half and we've got a very big contest again now.
Well, if he can get another couple, then perhaps he can square the ledger. But I think the other bonus in that passage of play was that Ozzy Jones got the ball out of the centre. We saw Ozzy running forward. He made a smart decision. It's a good kick. If Ozzy fires and Nicky fires, the Saints can win. Two quick goals to Nicky Winmar. The Saints back. It's a 10-point ball game. She's all closed up now. O'Farrell's short kick has a little distance in it. Harvey was smothered. Out comes Schwartz. Gives the hand pass away. Troy Luff looks down towards Leo Barry. Sydney want an answer here. They want a steadier. St Kilda want to stop them. Barry, penetrating kick. Lockett's the man. Used the body well, but Wakeley did well to get a pistol. At the back is Maxville. Got to control himself. He bends it back in towards goal. But there on the last line of defence is Campbell. Came into the side for Peckham. Goes out towards the half-back line. Lappin is there. Stevens is right on his hammer. Lowe won't be able to keep it in. And there'll be a throw-in on that outer side. Ten-point ball game. There is Paul Ruse in the centre of the screen. And young Jason Saddington next to him. Lewis. Typical Lewis little flick. Trying to accommodate him first, but he loses it. Burton now may be able to set something up for Harvey. He's set upon, but he's got Lappin running with him. Loses it. Regains it. And then they close in on him. Harvey will try and shrug the tackle again. I don't know how he does it, but he does. He's miraculous. Zilla might leave this one for Thompson. Thompson's in all sorts of trouble. Goes back to Lappin. Tries to find Zilla. Zilla's lightning little hand pass is going to be okay. Junior. St Kilda are coming back hard. Three goals in four minutes. And suddenly, we've got a real contest on our hands. Robert Harvey has kicked his second. And, Jared, you summed it up with one word, genius. Well, you can never write St Kilda off because they have got so many talented players. Rob Harvey is uh, just a great player, one of the greats of the competition. And you saw that uh, that was an inspiring goal from the Saints. Gee, the Saints charging here. Harvey's goal after Winmar's two. Harvey's kicked two very big goals tonight. The one thing he hasn't been noted for is... Uh, a big goal kicker, but he's kicked some important ones late in this season. He got one against West Coast that was important, got a gem against Carlton when they lost, but they had two big ones tonight. Swans have been caught a bit cold here, haven't they? Sitting on 22 points, come right back to the field. Free kickers are coming back, I think, to Orchard. High tackle, and he's going to kick the ball from outside 50. 9 8 9 4. So Swans work for an hour to get a 22 point break, and that deficit has been. Uh, eroded in the space of five minutes. We're back to all square here. There's a bit of concern about Nathan Burke. The doctors are talking to uh, Stan Owls on the phone at the moment. I know he's on the, on the mark here. Uh, keep an eye on him. Gee, that's oh. interesting. Orchard. In the back. Luff goes to full forward. O'Loughlin was a very, very tough kick. Hutched it and he hurt Normie Goss with the Dougie Hawkins. O'Loughlin held on to. No free kick. Pushes out, Stevens tries to find a way, hooks and bends, and it's going towards the boundary line. Out of play. Gee, Orchard's kick was so dangerous. I mean, I know they got away with it, but they only got away with it because there's a shove in the back on a St Kilda defender. Swans at the moment, I think, have lost their way. Ever to kick the ball back in. They've got to get back very quickly here, Sydney. Burke still being attended to. Everett. I think he's re-injured that shoulder, Sandy, that was troubling him at the start of the year. Laugh the short little chip. It's going to be OK. Finds Matthew Nix. He's had trouble moving that shoulder, though, Jared. That's for sure. Yeah, he might be spot on. Nix towards Lewis. He was the target. Just poked it down in front. Philandia was almost beheaded. Almost beheaded. The Swatter plays on. He wants an answering goal. He wants a steady goal. And he gives it to them. Big goal from Wayne Swass. He loomed large and he loomed early in this match as uh, a potential match winner. Perhaps a little bit quiet in the second term, but uh, when he gets the football and there's not a great deal of pressure on him, he is a very dangerous player, as dangerous as any player in the competition. And this, he just uh, does that side swerve so beautifully that he set himself up for another great goal. Been some big goals in this match, but none bigger than that right there. 10-8 to 9-4. 
that to really steady them. Some concern about Burke. Schwoss having an inspirational match here. Creswell's been terrific out of the centre. So Harvey to Burke. Well done to Winmar. And Winmar delivers towards full forward. Heatley caught underneath it. Stevens and Lappin. And a boundary throw in right forward pocket. Just in that uh, Tony uh, Buckley's still playing centre half forward. They're fellow at full forward there. He's trying to get him up into the game, I think, uh, Dipper. And at this stage, we've got to play uh, great credit to Wakeland's performance on Swan Plugger. But three minutes and a couple of shots at goal it may change quickly. Here's McPherson down towards half forward. O'Loughlin and Barry in the targets. It's Michael O'Loughlin. He turns on a threepenny bit. Stands and delivers long in towards full forward. Big bad bustling is there. And he was bad too. Because he kept that ball out of Sydney. And they don't like it, the Sydney fans. But he loves it. He's been great, Barry Hall in the fence. Been a forward player. Fantastic play by the big fella. There he goes. We're having a look at it again. Yes, you're right, Dougie. Luff doing the work from behind. Daniels is caught in front. Mitchell's hand pass goes astray towards Maxfield. Back to Luff again. Centering kick in towards the middle of the ground. Stafford, Everett, Johnny Stevens. Stevens needs help. Well, he got a bit of a shove and the ball deflected away towards Thompson. He gives it to Wakeland. Wakeland goes goalwards. Sails over the top of Seymour. Ozzy Jones, can he bend it back? Can he keep it in play? He can somehow. Heatley gets caught. He loses it. And the chance for Sydney to clear. But that ball has gone out of bounds on the ball from Seymour. And they're going to get another chance to bring it back. Was it Orchard, was it? Well, he's done a little wrong, the young man. But this could be costly. And the rain is falling. The breeze is blowing down and to the left. It's a tough, tough shot. Well, it's almost the impossible angle, but one of the problems with moving Tony Lockett out to centre-half forward is that if his man is released, he can just about bomb the ball into goals, and that's what we saw Shane Wakeland do. So it's a calculated risk from Rodney Eade. Lowe will try and open it up. In fact, he'll centre it. Everett is the target, and he's got him. Well, this is the sort of spider Everett's performance that I think has made the Saints such a great side. When he's dictating terms, St Kilda are generally on top. Have a look at that replay. Uh, Paul Ruse is coming onto the ground. And uh, Farrell is off. Ruse going to full forward, so a uh, very experienced player for Barry Hall. They must be listening to you, Douglas. It might be. But here is Spider Everett. Started it a little left. When you're building momentum, you just got to keep the goals ticking over, and that could prove to be a costly one. They've kicked nine five, but I reckon the five points have all been gettable. Thompson, Lappin missed two, Burke missed one, and that one from Everett. They've all been very, very gettable. Seymour's got it. They've gone across the ground. Swans have played a bit of dry weather football in this half and it hasn't suited them. Seymour, that's better. Can release Wharf here. Wharf at centre half back. Keeps it low. Wants Barry. Well played. Surakoski to Young. The Saints going well here. Young belts it back towards full forward. Orchard tried to build it away. Lewis. Lewis is very good on his uh, right foot. Oh. Not so good that time. Now Winmar couldn't take the mark. Handball was fantastic to Thompson. Thompson's ball going. The win won't bring it back. It's a behind. And 10-8 to 9-6. Thompson's kicked a couple of goals in the second term. He missed one from 20 metres out. He could have had three second quarter goals. It's Wakeland and also Lockham. It's been a real battle, that one. And Wakeland's had the honours. Luff, low, too slow, Lewis. Good tackle by the Saints. Thompson's having a big match. Handball on the up to Winmar. Push forward to Burke. Burke at 50 metres can straighten the body. Not a bad kick right to the goal square. Gives Lappin a bit of a chance. Zilla on the bottom of it. Zilla can't bring it back. This is where he was so dangerous here in round 10. Through from behind. 9-7 to 10-8. Important now for the Saints just to keep the pressure on. They've got to make sure their zone players, if they can't make it, bash it back into the space. Lewis takes the kick in. Booty on now for the Swans. are going to send half forward. And that ball... It's kicked in towards the middle, towards Creswell and Schwoz. The latter has it, is in trouble. His hand pass is going to be kept in play by Everett. Off to Harvey, he too is claimed. Wharf, 
rides the bump, perhaps should have been tackled. Burke persists. Winmar in for the assist. I think you're right, Bruce. The Swans just playing or attempting to play dry with a football, the quick give instead of bashing it uh, forward. And Andrew Thompson is just having an absolute quarter of a quarter. He's leading this charge along with Robert Harvey. And Winmar getting on the end of a couple of good ones. And lock it down the ruck down here, boys. 20 possessions to Thompson. 10 and 10. Been fantastic. Daniels claimed by Wolf. Spills free. Everett. Through there. There's been some holding on behind between Daniels and Wolf. It's gone against the Sydney player. Interesting that they've got Stewie Lowe on the goal line and uh, Spider's going down there also. Here's the kick. It's another good kick from Daniels. It's a very good kick by Jason Daniels. Oh, who said that? So Jack gets his first for the night. But more importantly, we've got a one-point ball game here at the SCG. Well, it's been an amazing turnaround. And basically due to the runners of the, of the Saints, they really have uh, lifted their game to another level in this quarter. Jack Daniels, well, it was a great goal, Jack. You've had plenty of criticism about your kicking, mate, but when you needed to kick one, you came up trumps. Well done, Daniels. His first goal for the season, playing in his first match since round seven. Back to a point. Creswell kicks to a half forward. McPherson trapped it well. Quickly onto the boot. This is danger. O'Loughlin wonderfully oh. done. Hooks, hooks, and hooks a goal. What a player. A sensational goal by O'Loughlin. He kicked four last week for the first time this season. This season he's been the three man. He's kicked three on six occasions. He kicked four last week and he's on four again tonight. And I think it's been the tactical move of the night so far to push Plugger out to centre half forward. It really has changed the balance. Plugger now going back to full forward. But taking him uh, out of the forward uh, square, the goal square, I think has just uh, unsettled the Saints defence a little bit. And if you lock them one out, he's a very tough player to compete with. What a goal by O'Loughlin. Stafford and Everett go at it once again. Daniels and Preswell are both there. Hall tries to barge his way through and he gets it onto his left boot down towards half forward. Dunkley was leading in the race. He was in front spot. Stewie Lowe with him. Burke with that crook shoulder still in there fighting hard. Interesting starting point for Paul Roos. It's uh, back to where he began, out on the wing. Justin St Kilda's attacking zone. Can they answer? Stevens defends. Hall starts to give chase, but this heads further afield towards Mooney. Hall with strength. Mooney's down. Schwoss leads in the race. Mooney picks himself up. Scratches the old noggin. We'll be right. And Barry just says, hey, you're with bustling now. A throw in on the other side. Low, out of the air, but in trouble. Harvey, likewise, but we know what a magician he is, able to get boot to ball. Orchard appears tackle, but a little too late. Jones Sarah Koski's it. trying to say to the umpire that uh, Mooney's got blood on him. Ozzy tries to let one go. Puts them just about inside 50. Comes over the top of Heatley. The race is on. Calculated gamble there by Dale. He's already been penalised once tonight, uh, Lewis, for going over the boundary line deliberately, and uh, that must have been a close thing. It's the way he plays, though, isn't it? On the edge. <laughs> exactly right. Slap wide. Winmar caught. Stevens off the ground. It's going to be OK. Orchard takes the mark. Is that half back? Chips in towards Ruse. Comes across the ground to Lewis. They try and set something up here. Lewis is called to play on now. He's got to go. He's got to go. As he does do it, he lives it right on the edge. Goes back to Ruse. Under pressure from Hall. Gets his kick towards Lockett. He marks on centre lane. Kicks into the man on the market. Oh, oh somehow gets through Wakeland, who's going to have a bit of a sore old jaw, I think, after that. Into half four. And the mark is taken by Darren Preswell. Pretty interesting non-decision that one from the umpire because the fend-off, we may have another look at it uh, from Tony, went straight into the mush of Shane Wakelet. Into the 
today he's got away with it and Darren Creswell's come up with a pretty important shot at the goal. Seven points the margin at the moment. St Kilda got to within a point. That's it at all. Creswell. Kicking into the wind, into the rain from 43 metres. Look at that ball get caught by the weather. Mooney and Sirikoski sit over the line for a bottle. 75 to 67. Saints have definitely got the scoring in. This rain is very strong. There's Barry Hall and Mooney about four or five minutes ago. <laughs> and then Sirikoski uh, pointing to the umpire as we come back to Mitchell with some pace. And the Saints go forward, kicks the ball over the top. Wharf and Winmar. Wharf will be probably pretty happy to see it go to the line. And it does. Gee, the Saints got it down the hurry, didn't they? Official attendance tonight, 36,000 and 76, which is a good roll up considering the weather in uh, Sydney today. Well, that's lucky. Heatley's got it. Burke went off the ground. Ruse can't believe he hasn't got a free kick. And Heatley's got the mark inside 50. Now, Wakeland off to the side here is running plug at the length of the field. Here's the replay of all of that. Ruse was uh, saying that he was held on to. And look at uh, the toe poke from Burke to Heatley. Now, Heatley kicked the first two goals of the match. And missed a shot after that. This is gettable. It's not easy, but he's such a strong kick that you, you reckon he could use the breeze here and put the Saints within two points. 50 metres out. It's a good kick. He's kicked the goal. They're within two points. He's kicked three. Never going to miss. It's 11-9 to 11-7. I think it's fair to say, Bruce, that that one makes up for the effort miss. That was a uh, pretty good kick. Not many players in the AFL footy would have been able to convert from that position. The beautiful thing about the style of Heatley is he doesn't try to kick the ball too hard. I think, I think Ruzi was uh, a little bit adventurous there looking for a free kick. But this is a magnificent conversion. And just what the Saints needed coming into three-quarter time. Heatley's goals, his three goals, all come from that end of the ground. St Kilda setting it up for a cliffhanger in the final quarter. Stafford wins it out of the middle. Creswell working hard, goes back into the centre once again, crouches on the ground and he gives it to Dale Lewis, pumps it high from a standing start, Mooney comes over the top, Schloss was in front, Mooney a little topo poke into half board, Ruse, in he goes and over they come on top of him. There'll be a bounce or a ball up at half forward for Sydney. A vital six minutes remaining in this third quarter. Swans have got a loose man in the forward pocket next to Lockett goes up early. Harvey comes away. He wobbles a punt to the outer wing. No mark is paid. Look at Stevens coming in over the top. The cry of ball from Creswell. To no avail. Mr. Lappin will disentangle himself. Brian Sheen will have another ball. Peter Philandia has just come back onto the bench. Boys on the St Kilda bench look on. Tony Brown, who's been on and off. Harvey gets claimed. Maxfield in trouble. Loses it. Crouch into the hand pass back. He comes. And the snap goes right across the face of the goal. Stewie Maxfield. Out of bounds on the full. This is Ozzy Jones. Spiralling a punt kick, getting plenty of distance towards its centre wing. Sydney have the numbers, the players waiting down. This is Nix, dangerously but effectively into the middle. Troy Love. Smack bang in the centre, short to Seymour. The Saints have got three spare players across the full back line. So Sydney are always going to find some spare players across the half forward line. By Lockman will be the target. Couldn't quite take it. Crouch. Centering in towards full forward. Hall was there. Wakeman sees it over the line. With Lockman. There'll be another throw in. Sydney still in attack. Time ticking away in this third quarter. The momentum's all been with Sydney in the last couple of minutes. The Saints have uh, once again, they're in that position where they've uh, defended very well, but they've got to clear the footy. Otherwise, the Saints will find a hole. Low. Maxfield as Everett leaves the ground. Maxwell gets a kick away. Oh, Lachlan top. Beautifully done. 
to McPherson. Great tackle on him. Right. Play on court. Burke belts it away. Not far enough. Stevens tries to half on it. Has another go. Quick hands. Gets it out wide. Under pressure, though, Creswell. Good play by the Saints. Thompson. Harvey beautifully done. In trouble. Ridden into the ground. Throw. Free kick to Ruse. Interesting stuff there. What about her Lachlan's give a minute back? Ruse, 65 metres out. A goal here, I reckon, is worth about three if the Swans can get one before three-quarter time. It is just so hard to score into the breeze at the moment. Stafford pops it up. Laugh. Oh. Heatley free kick to laugh. He put his backside out, and Heatley went over the top. Well, he was that far behind the ball, look, look, but he Heatley could have actually taken the front position. He didn't have to go early. Look how far behind he was. He could have just come in. There was plenty of time. Just taken that front position and pushed back. Well, this is a Creswell kick, isn't he? He's had two exactly from this point. Can Luff kick it a little further and a little straighter? It would take a very tough kick. If Rickon Lockett's about the only bloke in Sydney you'd back from here, or maybe Schwoss wound up. Can Luff do it? He's kicked it pretty well. It's not going to make it. Oh, Plugger went high. And it's gone through from behind. 11 10 to 11 7. A three point game. And the Swans just can't fire a goal into the breeze. Saw the spring of Lockett last week against Collingwood. We're seeing it again tonight. Kick back into play. Ruse. A great mark. Plays on quickly to Seymour. Over the top to Saddington. Just come onto the ground. Dale Lewis tucked in the pocket. He stops and he goes short to Plugger. Lockett in the pocket and a chance to go. Well, he's having a great game is Dale Lewis. Every decision he makes seems to uh, be the right one. He, could, uh, he knew he was forced onto his right foot, so rather than having a ping with the non-preferred, and he is capable of kicking it uh, successfully, he went for the higher percentage and he got it to lock it. His only goal came at this end of the ground in the first quarter. Kicks for his second. This is... Yeah, boy, Stan Owls now is on the bench, the St. Kilda interchange bench there. A very concerned look on his face. Well, the side's come back very well. A 22-point margin at halftime has been cut to four points. We're going to be in for a cliffhanger. And Sydney have had their opportunities. They've kicked seven behind from set shots. So they've had their chances. There was a shove in the back. The advantage is not going to be paid. It will come back. Two and a half minutes remaining. Third term. Stewie Lowe. Net half back. Kicks it as far as he can. Down the wing. Stevens there. Thompson in the front place. Still with Thompson. Did the ball go out? No. Thompson gets it back to Zilla. Forcing forward. Good play by Crouch. Some numbers here. They make a bit of a mess of it. But Settington gets it to Seymour. He straightens the body cleverly. And kicks to Lewis. Wonderful play by Seymour. He could have come wide, but he straightened his body. Lewis has got two men short. Decides to go to the pocket to Creswell. He's got him. It's the right place to kick a goal. Play on to Nix. And they've made it. Now, what's going to happen here? It's out of bounds. Well, well Nix was clear, but Creswell from 25 metres out on a night like tonight. Heat the off Everett on. I mean, I know it's easy to... Uh, have a second guess from my position, but oh, he was within range. Thompson kicks it out over the back. Can the Saints make it sting here and get the lead at three quarter time? Lapman pushes to the line. Sydney constructed that perfectly, didn't they? Until Creswell's gift to Nix, he probably shouldn't have called for it. Well, it was amazing because Nathan Burke took the gamble. He pushed up to be a free option on the wing by himself, some 50 metres away from Dale Lewis. A quick turnover saw Lewis come up with a footy. It should have been a goal. But uh, it wasn't to be. Sukoski, Luff, Wharf attacks, then tried to go straight through Thompson. Did pretty well. Got it high tackle, was it? No, not on uh, Stevens by Jones. And again, a ball up. 11 11 11 7. Have the Saints done enough? It's doubtful at the moment. It's got to be worth something, this breeze. And this pelting rain, it's very hard. Sydney's had so much of the play in their 50 metre line and hasn't been able to score a goal. Harvey belts forward. The Saints go forward with a long one towards the goal. Dunkley getting back now. A little bit of time, but it's got to sit for him. Picks it up nicely. 
typical Dudley kick. Makes plenty of distance. Nicks towards the line. Nathan Burke is right there with him. Inside the last minute of this third term and second. He is pumped, and so he should be. Rob Harvey going for the big spiral torpedo there. And, uh, well, it's worked against the Swan, against the Saints, because they did have Spider free. And speak of the devil, here is Spider going for home. Will he get a kind bounce? Across the face of goal and spins for behind. And we thought David Parker got excited from the coach's box. He loves his footy stand from the pro in. They've got uh, seconds only to try and score in this third quarter. Sydney desperate for another final at home. St Kilda desperate to stay in the race. Melbourne showed their cards today. What an impressive hand it was. Creswell goes down towards half forward. Lockett is there. Saddington tries to sneak out the back door. And in fact he does. Ruse has got to sit. Goes even wider. They're covered in mud but they're still surging forward. Creswell slipped at the crucial stage. The hand pass just going astray. The door opens for Mitchell. He kicks back towards the centre. The race is on now. Jones leads in it. Then gets taken out. And it's all over for the quarter. Three-quarter time. Seymour's at the bottom of the pack. Out comes Stan. And Rocket E, too, will make his way down to his charges. Three points the margin. Sydney leads. Up and up, Stan. They're going to need it for the final quarter. So here we go. Final quarter. Looks like Sirikowski might have a lock them. Starting off proceedings, but, uh, well, first goal just so, so vital. It looks like Saddington is a loose player starting in defence for the uh, Sydney Swans. Yep. Midway between Heatley and Stuart Lowe. I thought Stan might have started with a very small forward line and just punched the ball in low and got runners maybe like a Winmar and an Aussie Jones just to run onto it and make it a sprinting contest. Everett beat. Spider goes again. Gets the hand pass away. They can get the first one. Young kicks up towards half forward. Stevens tries to cut across. He's not successful. There is the man we were talking about, Saddington. That loose man in defence. Creswell juggles one. He's between half back and centre wing. Sydney going with the breeze. Up towards right half forward. Philandia's back on the ground. He gives it to Paul Ruse. Here comes the charge of Lockett. Great kick from Ruse and a great take from Lockett, but uh, in effect it was shed at home that move to Saddington who was lurking as a loose man in defence and I don't think that the Saints can afford to allow him just to float across there and pick up kicks at will they've got to man him up lock it then for his second kick one in the first term 29 goals in finals as the great man kicked got to kick the right hand goal pass here the big fella Yes, Doug, he kicks this, it's going to make it very tough. Lock it from 43 metres. Pulls it. Badly to the left. Well, with the left hand goal pass in. Sydney uh, on the bench, Stu Maxfield, Jason Moon, who's got a decent fat lip, also is on the bench. Uh, Leo Barry and also uh, Troy Luff. It's a good kick by Ruse to lock it. But uh, Plugger unable to do it. It's a similar angle to the one Heatley goal from. Heatley was a bit further out in the third quarter. 11 12 to 11 8. Stakes huge here. And on the bench for the St Kilda side, Tony Brown, uh, Joe McLaren, uh, Brett Knowles, and uh, Brett Cook as well. The ball coming back for Shane Wakeland. He's done a great job tonight. Plugger in a different role to the one we've uh, seen him over the years. He's had to. Uh, a bit of time at centre half forward and uh, even on the ball. Wakeland out deep, Stafford low. Stafford held his ground, taken by uh, Dunkley. Round the body, sprayed it a bit. Sirikoski's got it in the back pocket. He's got the job on O'Loughlin in the last quarter. It's a big job. Keeps it down the line and keeps it going to Everett. Big fly at the back, came from O'Farrell. Built at it back, Stafford too cute. Didn't take the footy, tried to punch it out. Harvey's little kick around the body missed its target too, out of play. 
78 to 74. Nathan Burke, co captain, with Stuart Lowe. Greg Stafford a moment ago probably should have taken the footy and then either handballed or kicked. Fancy stuff won't win this one. O'Farrell to Lewis, who's been so good to Harvey, who robbed him of it and kicks back towards centre wing. Good play by Stevens. Missed though there by uh, Dunkley, was it? Lowe's handball was very good. Releases Jones. Jones wide to Winmark. Wharf with him. Good battle towards the line and out of play about 55 metres left half forward for the Saints. The Saints have a lot of confidence on the season. They know that they can win here because they've got a very good record, a record here at SCG. I'm sure that's going to count this last quarter. 78 to 74. The first goal vital here. It'll mean so much to both teams. Heatley's handball into space. Hutchinson went to ground. Ruse went to ground. Tucks it underneath. And again, it's going to be a ball up. 78 to 74, 11, 12, 11, 8. Just a couple of minutes gone in this final turn. As Bruce said, the first goal. That's the one. Just four players, four groups of players in the Sydney Swans forward line. Ruse has pushed down onto the ball and Max is going with him all the way. Campbell took them on, tried to get through. He was unsuccessful. Thompson picked it up, beautiful. Lap it round the body, it's high. But it goes into the pocket, close to going over the line. And now taken over in the left forward pocket. Another throw in. St Kilda in attack and desperately trying to score. Well, that ball was going eight rows deep and it was blown back into play. This is a very strong win here at Sydney. Winmar was a touch. He kicked two in the third term, and he has kicked the goal, maybe the one that really matters to start this final quarter. St Kilda hit the front. Well, often when you're trailing by so much, the hardest goal to kick is the one that gets you in front. And the next goal, I think, is super important in this match. Saints in front for the first time since early in the first quarter. And they've got the all-important one, 12-8 to 11-12. Winmar's kicked three. He's had a real impact in the second half. Burke off the ground. Winmar in the van too. With him is War. Nicky just over the top of it. And it's out of play, but it's a very good spot because the Saints have been dangerous with Lowe's dominance in this position all night. Boundary throw in. Jared pointed it out very quickly. Just how good Lowe has been in these set plays. He also wrote an article when he was previewing this match, talking about Winmar's role as a second full forward, and that has proven to be a very accurate forecast. The kick by Ruse, down the ground, Saddington, O'Loughlin, he's kicked four, he measures it, he drills it, misses. He took his time, there was nothing wrong with his approach. He might have just been soft on it, but he missed. It's 11-13 to 12-8. There's one point in the difference. An absolute thriller here. Didn't we have a couple of thrillers in 96? Hawthorne and then Essendon and can, in that period of, uh, I think, the first week of the finals and then the preliminary final. I know you're up here for both of them, Sandy. And this one now is tightening just like those two were. Plugger just kicking the one so far. That was in the first quarter. He's had a couple of other opportunities. Hasn't been able to convert. Lewis. Where did that one come from? Play on. Mitchell does play on and he kicks back towards center wing. Dane Lewis in front. Spider Everett tries to storm his way through. Maybe St. Kilda can set something once again. Thompson gets a kick long down towards the forward line. It passes Seymour. Goes towards Winmar. He gives it back to the number seven as one of the umpires goes to ground. There'll be a throw in. Interesting decision, Dan in the back pocket. Mitchell took the mark but the umpire said touch play on. Mitchell went over the boundary line taking the ball out of bounds and then he came in and kicked it. Uh, so a little bit of confusion reigning there. Thompson tucked in a tight angle slams it into the behind post. Sydney will get some relief as Seymour will bring it back into play. One point in it. Let's have a look uh, again at that replay Jared. Well, Spider gets the ball down, and Lewis's kick goes straight up in the air. And if you have a look at Mitchell, the umpire in the background saying play on, you can see him waving his arms, and he's taking the ball over the line. In the meantime, back to the live action. Nick's defends. 
going to the outer side, but uh, number 23 kicks to the opposing number 23. Stewie Lowe. Fourth mark to Lowe. Goes in towards Lapp and he unloads Ward Everett. Spider directly in front. 35 metres out. Has a chance to give St Kilda just a little bit of breathing space. One point is their lead at the moment. Well, Spider Everett's been one of the top big men in the competition now for a couple of years and well, it'd be fine for all Australian selection this year. And it's because he has dominated the play. He's taken control of the one-on-one -on -one situations and he's finally starting to do that this latter part of the game. Kicking for his first goal, but just to give St Kilda a seven-point lead. Spider heads back towards the centre. Everett gets his first. St Kilda have a seven-point lead. 38 plays 11-13. Well, it was Stuart Lowe for mine that uh, was responsible once again. He went back and took a very courageous mark going with the flight of the footy. He had to Mitchell once again telling him what to do, but still had to take control of it. And this, once again, shows what a tough job it is to be a goal umpire. Seven goals to two after half time in the Saints' favour. I know they had the breeze in the uh, third quarter, but they've got a, a little break now. Everett doesn't get a clear kick, but the Saints go forward again. Lappin to centre half forward. Low did well to bring it to ground. Brown is a fresh man. Thompson's been fantastic. One more goal here would make it very difficult. Seymour goes to the line, and it's out of play. 11 13 to 13 8. Matthew Lappin's always looked dangerous. He's just got that extra pace that uh, can create at the loose man and get the ball running and secure his play. Stafford and Lolo just gets rid of him. Wrestled him away. Ruse to Creswell. Creswell onto the boot. Now, this is an important ball. Bouncing. O'Loughlin goes to ground. They hold it in there all right. McPherson back to Stevens. There's the street. Swans players here. McPherson does the right thing. Straightens the body. Runs an awful long way. Kicks to full forward. It's a good kick. Lewis had a fair bit of it. The Saints force it through from behind. The goal of the difference. 11 14 to 13 8. And once again, it was Darren Creswell across the half-back line. He won the important ball that got the Swans going. And another big game from Creswell. 26 possessions, and he'll, he's got plenty more work to do. Low the target. Dunkley brings it to the ground. Well done. Then goes in after it with Burke. Low over the top. Lewis free kick low. Advantage given. Surikoski away now. High ball to set a half forward. At the back was Stafford. Comes to ground to Brown. Good tackle on him at the back. Coming from Stevens. Nicks goes to ground. It was by himself the goal square. Thank you. Heatley brought down and holding the footy. And the Swans are away. What a big play this is. A big turnover. Can Stevens deliver? Oh, gee, waited for a world play there by low big fella. The Lewis just waited in the centre. Burst kick off the ground goes the wrong way. Every little uh, nuance important here. The quick kick away by Lappin. Everett on his own now. Not in the goal square, though. 70 metres from goal. Stafford coming in late. Turnover so costly here. It was a big call from Dipper also because Heatley was just one step away from kicking that ball. Everett was 40 metres clear in the goal square, but as you said, Bruce, every little incident is so vital here. That kick off the ground from uh, Burke proved oh, costly. Wide, Chris will win the ground. Lapman 55 metres out, goes to Winmar in the pocket. Winmar unable to take the mark, and Nix forces it over the line. Yeah, sorry, Bruce, I just saw Everett there running into the goal square, and he he just he made about 60 minutes to get there, and uh, as Jerry said, one more kick, bang. The extra time if it's a draw, I know we're still a fair way out, but it's very tight. Don't feel like there's going to be a whole lot of goals kicked from here on in. The Saints sitting on a six-point lead, but they're very dangerous on their counter-attack here, and I think the Swans know one more goal, and it might be Curtis Jones out on the floor, trying to push forward off the ground with the left foot. As Jarrett said a moment ago, the Swans have got a real problem when they get at the centre wing to know exactly where to go after that. Seymour kicks it down the line. Lewis, oh. low, big fly, couldn't take it. Oh. Paul Falani got uh, a coat hanger and gets a free kick. <laughs> He's uh, between half forward and centre wing. Now, this is where they've had a problem. Philandia sets it up now. O'Loughlin's going to be the go-to person. He got underneath it. Surikoski. Luff around the body. It's 
just missing, well, I say just missing, just going in from behind from Luff, but certainly kickable. 30 metres out in front. Could be a handy behind in the contest. They like, the, they like the one point victory here this week <laughs> in the final. And uh, she's all set up. 11 15, 13 8. Wakeland wide, low the target. Ruse, good mark. He's done some good things, Ruse. He's kept in fresh heat, hasn't he, tonight? He kept him late. And when he's produced him, he's done pretty well. He goes to set a half forward. They need a big mark. Sirikoski belts it back for the Saints. An important ball again. Daniels written into the ground. Schloss can't get hold of it. Harvey quickly on. And it's going to be a ball up 50 metres from goal. We're sitting on the edge of our chairs here. I can tell you that it is so tense and exciting. 81 to 86. And under eight minutes remaining. I think they've got to attack to win this game. They just can't rely on defence. Low again slaps it away. Crouch working hard, Orchard working hard, Barry Hall is there as well, look at Thompson in with him. They pounce upon it, almost thrown out towards Harvey. Gets a short little chip kick and will throw it in on the other side. 31 possessions for Robert Harvey, 20 kicks, 11 hand passes, kicked a couple of goals. Seconds soon will become precious, especially as far as Sydney is concerned. Nix on the outer side finds himself strangely with a little bit of space. A lot learned. Bounces off his chest as he shoves hit the umpire. He's going to get a free kick. He's going to get a free kick almost directly in front. Sira cannot believe it. He's got the breeze at his back. And he has this kick to put Sydney in front. What do you think, Jared? Well, it was a 50-50, uh, I thought, Sandy. It, uh, I think technically it was probably there, but a good decision, uh, great decision from Peter Carey under the circumstances. The roar will tell the story. A lot. 50 out. Short little chip to Stafford. The little man leaves it to the big man. Well, Spider Everett uh, elected to stand on the mark, which was the right thing to do, but... Barry Hall, I think, was given the responsibility of picking up Stafford, and he was just standing 20 metres away. Has played four finals, has kicked the goal. Just though Lewis is coming off with a blood rule. So is Greg Stafford going to be the man? He came back into this lineup with Philandia and Ruse. I don't think Lewis can. I think Maxfield's gone the wrong way, hasn't he? Well, I think it was going to be Maxfield, then the change was made. It's going to be Mooney. So Mooney on, in fact, a double change. Brown is off, and McLaren on for St Kilda. And the rain is starting to come down against him. And, and Dale Lewis has got blood coming from the uh, right elbow, so that should be patched up pretty quickly and be back out in the uh, action. Thank you, boys. Dipper and Doug on the boundary. Stafford. Directly in front, Spider on the mark. This for the lead. It's a great kick. Listen to the roar. Sydney in front. Stafford gets his first goal. A one-point ball game. The free kick there for O'Loughlin. According to the umpire, a push. He went short to Stafford, and the big man was able to convert. What a finish here at the SCG. It's a grandstand finish. It's 12-15 to 13-8. Free kick looked tough against Sirikoski from the Saints' point of view, but Stafford delivered. Gets the tap. Crouch. Gets a kick forward. Every little kick important. Lappin held it up. Ruse tried to. De uh, Young pushed forward towards the boundary line. O'Loughlin has had such a big impact on this game. Sirikoski over the top. O'Loughlin trying to get it out. Can't. Boundary throw in. Swans have got it in the right spot as far as they're concerned. Saints have got to score to win now. They've really got to score a goal, you'd think, to win. 12-15 to 13-8. O'Loughlin's kicked four goals, four tonight. Still on centre wing, just in Sydney's attacking zone. Stafford taken out of it by Everett. An interesting hand pass by Daniel McPherson. He threads it through a wall of players. Four and a half minutes and counting down and another throw in. 
Scores a level at the end of this match, two five-minute periods at uh, either end for both teams. Stafford edged out. McPherson. McPherson with that. He gives it away to Polandia. Polandia goes to Creswell. Creswell under pressure. Gets a hurry kick down to the forward line. Ruse is in trouble. Back he goes to the small man. Ruse again. Tumbles a punt in towards full forward. Lock it at the back. And eventually it's pushed over the line. 4-1 behind. Matthew Young. And players train for 20 odd years to perfect their skills. And coaches harp on players putting handballs into the path of players so they can run onto it. They don't have to stop. We saw there Creswell, he was running at goal, but he had to throw the brakes on because the handball went behind him and a big chance went begging there for the Swans. Young punches it as hard as he can. Harvey, front spot, good handball by Orchard. Schloss's kick is terrible. Taken by Burke, belts it back. Thompson couldn't quite. Nix has got hold of it, takes a chance. Well played, gets it to Philandia. Wonderful football by Nix. He stretched the Saints to the limit, didn't he? After Schwoss had almost made a very big mistake. Fantastic atmosphere here. Now, the little fellow, he kicked five against Port Adelaide in the opening round of the uh, season, and since then has managed just one further goal in 11 games. Well, I reckon it might be too far out here, Bruce. The wind is so, so hard uh, coming across the ground there. Well, take a decent kick. And take a very good kick. Plugger was unable to goal from a, a better angle and about the same distance. This would take a super kick from the little fellow. He's hooked it. He's hooked it for uh, behind. So the Saints definitely have to score a goal to win. They're three points behind with three minutes remaining. They're not going to have four scoring shots. Have a look at the inaccuracy as Lewis is about to come on. The inaccuracy for... Sydney in this second half. We're up at 12 17. Here's Michael O'Loughlin. Stafford screaming for it in the middle. He goes short of the line. Troy Luff. At the moment, Father's Day for him tomorrow is looking pretty good. He goes into half forward. Lockett came over the top, but he couldn't take it. Wakeland steams out the St Kilda. Is this the last roll of the night? He kicks it up towards the centre wing. Who's going to be first to recover? Seymour. Brown. Seymour's got it. Brown's got him. Spills loose once again. Thompson couldn't take it cleanly. Out the back door it comes. Campbell tries to soccer off the ground. It's on St Kilda's 50. There'll be a ball up. Desperate times requiring desperate measures. Seymour was the one that held it. The players can see on the scoreboard the time that has elapsed. It's socket off the ground towards Thompson. Thompson gets a high kick. Lowe is underneath it. Can't take the mark. Sydney defending. Push wide. Thompson again is there. He can't take it. McPherson over the top to Ruse. A little bit of time. He heads for the boundary, but he does it in a subtle fashion. Jim Nix's handling close here was perfect. On centre wing. Interesting spot here now because I don't think the Swans players know whether to stay back and uh, flood the defensive area or to push forward and win this football. Hasn't Ruse been very important in the crunch situation, boys? No doubt. There he is again, beaten by Lowe, however. It's locked up. Another bounce on centre wing. Spot has gone forward. He's with Dunkley. They've also got Winmar. But you've got now a pretty, a pretty crowded St Kilda forward line. And the space in front of Tony Lockett is 100 metres. Low, Stafford, Lewis did very well. High ball, Barry Hall. Luff's going to make a contest. He does extremely well, Luff. Belts it to the line. Boundary throw in. Three points of difference. If the Swans win tonight, they have a home final either next week or the week after depending on what happens to the Bulldogs. If the Saints are beaten and West Coast win, tomorrow they're out. The Crows want Sydney to win. The kick by Lappin. Down the line. Missed by Nix. Here's a chance. Thompson onto it. The big play of the night. The kick in front of Winmar. Wharf. Winmar played him beautifully. Still Nicky's there. Still Nicky's there. He's just missed it. Oh, the old fella played it superbly. Just couldn't quite finish what was going to be a magic touch-off. And we're back to two points. He did everything right, Nicky. He drew two players. 
he had to go for a shot at goal. There was a player there, but uh, he wasn't to know that. Just couldn't quite thread the goals. Nick's driving. He didn't get it far enough. Campbell couldn't hold them up. Schwarz, Stafford, good handball. Gets it to Lewis. Lewis at halfback. Clever kick by Dale Lewis down towards the centre wing. Slap back and kept in play. Ozzie Jones round the body. They need a mark now. Daniels couldn't take it. McPherson once again has been busy. Pops it out in front of Orchard. We'll run it over the line. Well, Jason Mooney was 35 metres down the field. He didn't see him. And in the meantime, the clock ticks down. You get the feeling now that St Kilda are going to have to produce something quite amazing if they're going to do it. Jones couldn't take it. Daniels spins out, but he's going to have to go again. Lewis locks it up. There'll be a fall up on centre wing. Well, Dale Lewis has played one of his best games ever for the Sydney Swans at the appropriate moment. On centre wing. Low over the top. Everett comes charging through. He couldn't take it. McPherson, a valuable kick. It'll take them five seconds to even get there. The white one is ripped to the ground by Plugger. But in the meantime, we're down to 18 seconds. It's on the left half forward flank for Sydney. Even the players want to know how long it is. Come on to go. A ball up. Stafford just slaps it over the line. Sydney are going to win their first final this year on their home turf. Stafford, Everett, Lowe has been fantastic. He's tried his guts out. Ozzy Jones over the line. Throwing for the game. Everett slaps it high. Jones with that the siren. Sydney have won. Sydney in a thriller. But this is just one battle in the war. There's still a long, long way to go. Sydney successful by two points. 12-17.